as I get closer, these are old railroad ties. And they do look pretty old. Yeah, so it's some sort of trough right there. And then old barbed wire. This is cool. I've been to Camp Ibis one other time and I loved it because there was, it felt like there was history around and it's really sparsely populated. There were very few campers. Uh, in fact, I think there was only one when I was here last year and this year I've only seen one other person come through in a van and that's it. There's nobody else out here. So finding new areas like this is really exciting to me. Like it's just, it's interesting and it adds some more flavor and texture to this area for me. Echo? No. Let me find. It's like a piece of a, I don't know what that is. I just pulled up my map to make sure that we're still on BLM land. And uh, we are, and in fact, where we're going, I double checked and it is BLM. So we're allowed to be out here. Just when I see something like this, I just kind of wonder, you know, I would hate to be on like some farmer's land and have have him come out here and be pissed that I'm on his land or whatever, but there's no signs out here. And this is definitely part of Camp Ibis. And the app I use to determine uh, what's public land and what's not, it's a really good one. It's called Free Roam and it's free. And it has these different layers on there. You can even put layers on for your cell provider and it'll give you an idea of if you're gonna get service where you're deciding to camp or not. It works really great and it, get, it shows a nice grid and you can zoom in just like on uh, Google Maps and see the exact location that you're at and you know, like where you wanna hike to and see if it's within that grid. And it has um, the map for uh, the national forest land and all that stuff. It's really, really helpful. The main app that I've been using lately is iOverlander. That's also free. And that really helps being in an RV. You know, we need to stock up on water and propane and we need to find places to dump our gray water and our black water. And it shows you spots all along whatever route you're taking where you can get all those services. And then people leave reviews and a lot of times they'll leave photos of the facilities there, like what the dump looks like, uh, where the water spigot is, things like that. Well, that one's really helpful. And it also pinpoints a lot of free camping spots in forest land and BLM land and leaves really good reviews and a lot of pictures. The one thing, like we're in a truck and a trailer, so we can't get around you know, it's called iOverlander, right? So these are Overlander people generally that use it. And they have rigs that can go pretty much anywhere, right? If they get into a, a road or an area of land that's kind of sketchy or sandy or whatever, it's not a big deal to them because they can get out real easily. I'm towing a trailer, so I have to really read those reviews and look at the pictures carefully to determine if we're going to be able to do that or not. Uh, a lot of van lifers use iOverlander as well. So you'll see a lot of reviews from van lifers in there. And 
it's really helpful. Like if you're just getting started, you need to find some spots along a certain route to camp for free. There's all kinds in there. There's some of them are just pull outs on the side of the road. But well, we're getting into some really big wash territory now. I mean, this is big wash. This is like, this is the main wash. It's probably half a mile wide. And I'm just hiking right now to, I see some like bright yellow sand. And from what I could see on Google Maps, the area that I'm trying to find, it does have some kind of yellowish, sandy looking structure around it. I have no idea what it is, but let's get into it. What do I think it is? Well, I know they were doing stuff with, uh, you know, I don't know if it was like bombs and explosives. I'm sure they did some ammunition stuff out here. So maybe this is a shooting range. Um, I also thought maybe it's like some sort of a burial site or like an old, you know, church site, like a chapel area, that kind of thing. It has a really interesting shape. It's kind of like a, looks like a big egg shape with these kind of like yellowish, bor yellowish border. Like I'm thinking it's stones or something like that. And then there's, it looks like there's like a little hut. And now that I've seen this, uh, that pen there for whatever it was for cattle or horses, it makes me think that might be what we're hiking to right now is some, some type of animal pen. But this is neat out here. Now, you wouldn't want to camp in here. It's funny because you'll see down in the comments, you'll see people saying, oh, be careful in the washes. They get flooded. And when they get flooded, they get flooded really quick. And you can die. You can get washed, washed away. So you better get out of there. And you know what? It's true. Um, it is. I mean, it is true. You wouldn't want to camp in here because in the middle of the night, you know, there could be a storm coming through and yeah, you'll get washed out. But as far as for hiking, honestly, this is one of the best places to hike because you have a clear view. The terrain, as far as like for the dogs to, to walk on, is really easy on their feet because it's mostly just soft sand. Okay, here it is. This has got to be it. It's funny when you get to these places, because I've been looking at this place on Google Maps since I was here last year, and I'm like, what is that? What is that? I gotta find out what it is. And it's always different. And you'll look at camp campsites, camp areas on Google Maps, and you get this overhead view, and you think you know what it's gonna look like when you get there, like how the terrain's gonna, gonna be, and what the campsites are gonna look like, and what the roads are gonna look like. But once you're there, it's always so different. I'm not saying that Google Maps doesn't help because it does, it helps a lot. But what you picture in your mind and what you see on Google Maps and then what you see in reality is always so different. So let's take a look at what I found here. Now what's really neat is you can hear birds out here. We were camped, well, it must be a mile, mile and a half away from here and there's really not even any birds out there. Like I said, I haven't even seen any animals, a couple squirrels and that's it. So if you can see what's in the sand here, you'll see the yellowish rocks that I was viewing from the satellite view on Google Maps. And it is something, is it a pond? It's definitely permanent. It's a lot smaller than I thought. On Google Maps, I thought it was probably six times that size. I thought it was this huge area where you could park a couple vehicles in there. And this looked like it was a shelter because there's a little shadow coming out from 
the side of it here. But now I can see the shadow is, it's a pipe. So what is this? Very interesting. <laughs> I have no idea what this is. And where does that pipe go to? Does this go to that that big endless pipe that we found up there? Is this some sort of water collection? I mean, to my eyes, this looks fairly new. I guess it is cracked and that kind of thing. And my first thought was like, oh, some hippie built this. It's like some oasis that some crazy person built out here. What is it? Well, it looks like it collects water. Is it made to just collect rainwater? So when it rains, then you open this valve up and it, cause it seems like you get all kinds of debris and stuff down in there. Now there is a date on it. It says 46. Right? Yeah. 46. Dogs are saying there's something in there, but I guess it's possible. They smell something in there. I do see some kind of dirty trails coming up through here. <laughs> they smell something. There's something living in there. a small light that can shine in there but that's about it this is not what I was expecting to find it's some sort of water collection system and since it says 46 on it Camp Ibis I believe was dismantled in 44 something like that So this would have been built after that. I'm gonna try and lift this and see if I can. It's actually kind of amazing that this is still here. This was built here in the 40s. It's 80 years old. And you would think with all the water coming through this wash that this would have been easily washed away at some point. Well, I can lift it. Okay. Uh, this is scary. An echo goes right to it. Okay. I just was thinking, like, what if something pops out of there? I don't want Echo to be near it. But I, I want to open it and see. It's light. It's really not heavy at all. It's just, it's water, it's full of, there's one wire crossing over it. But I don't drop my camera down there. And there's some dead bees. Even Echo's scared. <laughs> So now that I know there's water in there, what's happening is animals are coming here 
to get water. So they can stick their head in there, get a drink, and then go back out into the desert. And that's why the dogs are so interested in this spot right here, because you can see it's stained. So the animals will come here and pee, probably a lot of coyotes, raccoons, things like that. Probably bigger animals that can easily stick their head in and come back out. I mean, probably all kinds of animals, mountain lions. Uh, there's probably coati out here. Maybe, maybe that's the purpose of this. Maybe this was designed to fill up with water. and give animals a place to drink. And then maybe they get hunted or something, I don't know. This portion is interesting. I don't know why this comes out like that. This bird is coming inside. And they must be going inside to get water, obviously, but also the, the dying bugs that land in there. So we're gonna head back to camp now and I looked on Google Maps to see which direction this is pointing and it's pointing a little bit past our camp so we need to hike about in that direction just a little bit off the axis of this and that'll take us right back to camp and so when I look out in that direction I can see a peak and I'm pretty sure if I just aim towards that peak that one right there that'll take us right back to camp in fact I might go between this peak and this peak and just hike right down there that'll be the quickest way back to camp because the rains are coming I can smell it and I can feel it from out there Supposedly there are still signs out here that warn about, I guess, unexploded munitions. Or, or they're probably just signs that said, like, stay out because we're exploding stuff here. Maybe this is one of the posts for it. What is this? These make me think of batteries, Some sort of old batteries. And there's a bunch of these here tied together. If you know what this is, put it down in the comments because I'm super curious. It looks pretty old. It just makes me think of batteries. Some wires on a circuit board.
funny, I was just talking about explosives and that was my first thought when I saw this. Maybe we're just now starting to get hit with some rain. Head back to our camp. Here's some rock piles. I think this is kind of where there were some like big holes and they've been filled in with these rocks. So they go all through here. They kind of look like graves too, so who knows. They're definitely out of place rock piles.